Imagine you're accelerating from zero to 85 kilometers an hour in just three seconds. In that time, you'll travel the full length of a basketball court, about 30 meters. Now, we're gonna decelerate. We're gonna go from 85 to zero, but this time, we only have four meters to stop. It sounds like a pretty fast car. And one with actually very good braking system. Uh, now, to make things more complicated, let's imagine there is nothing to protect us. No seat belt, no airbag, no steering wheel, nothing. Just your body and mind, it has to make all of that happen. And what's going to stop you is the water. That's the sound a human body makes when he hits the water at 85 kilometers an hour. Um, you see, what I do, I'm a professional cliff diver. I jump from very high places into water. If you've seen the highest platform in a diving pool, that's 10 meters high. I jump about three times that high and sometimes higher. Thank you very much. Of course, this is not where it all started. When I was a little kid, I remember my mom taking me to the pool. Uh, the first thing I wanted to do, put my bathing suit on, run in the water. I just wanted to run and jump in. I had no idea what I was doing, but that feeling, I loved that. I just loved feeling uh, that I was flying. Most times I probably landed flat on my back or in my stomach, but I loved it, you know? I loved that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure a few of you have jumped in the water, enjoyed that feeling too, and also felt the pain of, of not landing right. <laughs> but a, a few years later, while I was in high school, I joined a diving club. Now I'm starting to learn the right technique. What is it that you need to do to do a proper dive? I fell in love with the sport. I wanted to be at the pool every afternoon and uh, every free time that I had. I represented my country, my city, the state, I won national and international competitions. Uh, but after a while, diving in a pool becomes repetitive. You see, everything in the pool is the same. Every pool around the world, it looks exactly the same. Same height, same depth, everything is controlled. I love the sport, but everything becomes the same. I wanted to try something different, and that's what I wanted to try cliff diving. You see, with cliff diving, to me, it's a more natural way of diving. What I need to do is find a high place. As long as there is deep water, I'm ready to dive. Um, for example, when I walk around the street and uh, I see a bridge, I don't see a way to cross the river. I don't see a way to go from one side to the other. I go to the middle of the bridge, look down, and start seeing if it's deep water, maybe it's high enough, maybe I can jump. When I'm with my wife on vacation and we're at a nice beach and there's some nice cliffs around, I start looking around, swim away, climb up, and then all of a sudden I'm diving. 
you see? It's, it's a new challenge every time I find a different place, and that makes it that much more exciting. Now, in a dive, there's three main parts. Before the dive, that's when I'm standing, preparing. The moment of flying, when I'm falling and going through all the motions, and the final moment, which is the water entry. The main element of the dive, it comes in the first part, when I'm getting ready to jump, and that is fear. You see, I'm sure it happened to all of us that when you step to a high place and you look down, there is a voice inside your head telling you, step back, get away from there. Yeah? Uh, call it whatever it is, survival instinct is a defense mechanism. Anything you want to call it is just protecting you. It's just making sure you're not going to do anything crazy and you're going to hurt yourself. You see, I step to the edge many times. I get that voice in my head and I have to work through that. That natural fear, I have to walk and pass that to be able to jump. Also, there is a second type of fear that comes to me, and that's a little bit more rational because it comes from the knowledge I have of the dive. I know what I'm about to do. You see, I'm not just jumping straight down, you know, arms on the side and then hoping for the best. I'm doing flips and twists, and I'm flipping all the way to the water. So I know that if something goes wrong, I need to make sure that I can solve it. So there comes a, a second type of fear. With my training, all the physical training I've done all my career and all the mental training, I managed to overcome that fear. You see, most people, what they will do is take two steps back, climb down, go home, and do an afternoon with the family. No, me, I do the opposite. I actually jump in the water. That's the best part of the dive. Because at that moment, I'm not worried about anything anymore. I don't even realize what's around me. I don't see anybody. I don't hear anything. I'm just fully focused on what I'm about to do. During the dive, the second part is when I'm falling, I'm flying through the air. It's the, it's the nicest part of the dive. Why? I don't know if you've ever been in the car and you roll down the window and your dog sticks the head out and he's just smiling, you know? That's how I feel. <laughs> it's, it feels so good to feel the wind in your face, you know, you're falling really fast. But those three seconds that I spend in the air, in your head, they take so much longer. The brain works so fast that I feel like I'm falling for 20 seconds, 30 seconds. If I made a small mistake, I have time to think about it and try to fix it. And if everything is going right, I'm just enjoying the ride. The final part is when it comes the, um, the water entry. You see, when you enter in the water, this is the moment when the dive can really go wrong. This is the only moment when things can go bad. Deceleration is so hard that I'm sustaining about 5 Gs for an instant. I weigh about 72 kilos, that's about 360 kilos that I have to support for an instant on impact. So I have to make sure that the body is in completely vertical position. Any part of the body that sticks out of that vertical, it can be very dangerous. Now, why am I telling you all of this? You see, fear sometimes stops us from doing what we want to do. You see, if I let that fear stop me from jumping and not trusting what I learn, what I know I can do, I wouldn't be able to enjoy this. People think because I jump from very high places that I'm not afraid of anything. Um, of course, the obvious question is like, you may not be afraid of heights. I'm like, well, I'm, technically I'm not afraid of heights. I'm afraid of the water. I'm afraid of what's gonna happen if I make a mistake and hit the water really hard but I'm not afraid of heights. Then I kept thinking, because I wanted to try to make sense of these fears, and uh, what is it that I might be afraid of? Maybe some small insects, you know, some little spiders or something, but it's not that I'm afraid of them. I don't like them. I don't want to be around them, but I don't mind them. If, if they're far enough, uh, I, I don't mind if they're around. So I kept thinking, and as I was a little kid, I was afraid of the dark. You know, my brother, used to tell me, uh, there's a monster under the bed. <laughs> you know, there is a monster in the closet. So you don't want to turn the light off. You don't want mom to leave the room. You want them to be with you. Uh, also, I grew up in a, in a very bad neighborhood in my city, in Cali, in Colombia. 
And uh, there were some dark streets where you wouldn't walk through, you know? And then I started thinking, I'm not afraid of the dark, you know? What I'm afraid of is walking through that street and maybe some bad things are going to happen. Yeah? What I want you guys to know is that sometimes what we think we're afraid of, maybe we just don't have enough information about it, or we may not have gone deep enough to understand that we are not afraid of it. I convince myself that I can do it. I want to have that feeling of, of falling again. Honey, look at this area over here. Fall oh, here, it's perfect. This is my first time in Africa. The idea is to jump from Victoria Falls. Let's do it, man. Yeah. We started with the bad news first, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I will be scared on the next one, and in the next one, and in the next one. It's the longest shower he's ever taken in his life. <laughs> just to be there is just the best feeling on earth. <laughs> you just started and you're dead. <laughs> There's a chance that you could get caught in that whirlpool and pull down. I've never been in a river with that much current. Nobody has come out alive. Who dare to do what you want to do? Plenty of time, John. I take your time. They might end up falling off the ladder. He's telling me that he can do it. In that moment, probably was the worst decision of my life. Yes, I'm leaving too long here. I. <laughs> Thank you. I promise that I survived the dive. <laughs> um, I want to tell you, I don't want you to go and do crazy things, yeah? But what I want to tell you is that there is joy to be found in our fears. Find it, challenge it, but for sure, enjoy it. Thank you very much. <laughs>